All right, here we are in the lobby. I'm going to go ahead and mute this guy. I really don't like talking to people on this game. So let's go ahead and get in the game here. I always mute people before playing them on here. I really don't want to get like crap talked on. All right, so this is a keepable hand. Uh, for my new friends, this is a mana or a land. It produces mana and you use your mana to play your spells like these. And we have two draw spells, so I feel pretty good about it. Uh, no removal, but we'll see where it goes. Um, let's just keep it and try it out. So I'll play a land. You can only play one land per turn. That's uh, pretty important to the upkeep of the game, or the tempo of the game, I should say, because if I don't draw a red, I basically can't play these guys the whole game, and that would really, really screw me. So it looks like a black deck. Uh, no turn one play for him either. That's pretty common. Ooh, that's very good. Uh, so now we have three draw spells that flashback. Flashback means I can play it out of my graveyard. And uh, this card in particular is an instant, which means I can cast it at any time as long as I have a blue and one mana of any color open, which I do. So I will cast it here on his end step. That way I sneak another card draw. Not really what I wanted, but at least we drew it. So still not what I want. That's fine. Uh, the decks in this game are pretty screwy, so I feel still feel pretty good. Uh, if he plays a creature, I can counter it with Nullify, which costs blue-blue, which I have. Or I can draw a card at the end of his turn, which I'm doing. And he did not play a land on his turn, so he did not get to cast a spell. Ooh, and we draw one of our lands. And he has to discard a card. So this game's already going really well for us. So unfortunately, while this will tap for red or blue, it does enter tapped. Uh, tapping is when you turn a card sideways, and that indicates that you have exhausted that resource for this turn. So since we drew a mountain, I'm actually still going to play this uh, for tempo reasons. If I play it now, it'll untap next turn, and I still have a draw spell or a counter spell open. And a counter spell means that if he tries to play a creature or aura, I can make it so that it goes straight to his graveyard and never enters the battlefield. So it's useful for sort of dealing with threats before they arrive. He's still not going to do anything. Uh, I'm sorry, this game is kind of boring. It's just me sort of sitting back and playing my draw spells, but we do have some of our win conditions in hand, which is good. Uh, there's hardly any double black mana spells that will kill our guys. There's no Doom Blade in this game. Uh, I believe they have to use... I think there's a dead weight, so I will not play Talrand just yet. I like to have a bounce spell in hand so I can return him. But actually now, um, I might play Talrand. Uh, I might actually play my Goblin Electromancer, because he will allow me to flash these back for one less, and I can continue to draw cards while having a guy on the board. So he costs a red and a blue, which I have. Uh, and he, this is power, and this is toughness. Power is how much damage he can do, and toughness is like his health. So he's a pretty useful creature. We'll see if he gets killed. Hopefully he won't. And if he does, I can play an instant in response. Or an instant, not an instance. So let's see what this guy does. So I'm going to put ahead and pause the timer, and I'm going to play one of these to draw a card. So really seeing the power of Think Twice in this game. Uh, great, a land, that's what I wanted. And yeah, he's just, he's in black-white, he's just not doing very good. He might, he might just leave the game here, in which case we'll default to playing the computer. So I'll go ahead and play a land. I'm going to go ahead and attack. So when I attack, this creature so I, I'm tapping him to show I'm attacking, and he's going to do 2 damage to this guy, so this guy will go down to 18 health, and we're that much closer to winning the game. Now, second main phase, I'm going to go ahead and play my Gutter Snipe, because even though I could play my Tower Man because I have a backup, if I play the Gutter Snipe, I can draw a card at the end of his turn and do 2 damage to him, and so that seems a little better. And I can also keep up my counter magic. So we're very firmly in control of this game right now. Also, I do like the interface on this game, but uh, it's a lot slicker than Moto. Uh, but unfortunately, we only get to play one game per match, so there's no sideboard. Okay, so he's finally in, a, he's in three colors. He's going to make me sacrifice a creature. In response, I'm just going to go ahead and draw a card, because I'm going to sacrifice my Goblin Electromancer, and I want to go ahead and get that off. So deal two damage to him. Draw a card. Another think twice. That's great. Let's go ahead and sacrifice this guy. So he, play, he played a card that says uh, I sacrifice a creature, so he got rid of one of my creatures, and then he will gain life equal to that creature's toughness, which was two in this case. And this spell cost him three mana, which is why he could not play it before, a black and two of any other kind. So now I'll play that. It's kind of tempting to play the Talrand here, but I, I th in fact, I think I will. We have a backup, and while we're taking out our counter spell, I do have this Vapor Snag to return something to my hand, 
and I can think twice to make a token and deal two damage to him. Because you'll remember Talrand makes blue drake creature tokens. He's also a, my avatar doppelganger here. I don't see a lot of people with this avatar. Uh, I really like her. All right, so he's, he's in the game now. Um, but I think we've set up a state. Yeah, so he's going to do it again. That's not a problem, though, because in response, I'm going to think twice, which will deal two damage to him. And I'm going to gain a token that I will sacrifice so I don't lose one of my guys here. Great, another counterspell. This is a... So these are both counterspells. This one costs three, but it counters target spell. Whereas this one costs two, but it can only counter... It can only counter a specific spell. Target creature or aura. So we'll play a land. We'll leave up all of our counter spells and all of our draw spells. Oh, I just noticed this guy's playing with like a 70, like an 80 card deck, maybe more. That's really not good. Um, the minimum amount of cards you can have in a magic deck is typically 60. And that's really what you want to do so that you draw all of your cards, the cards that you want to draw. So you have a lot of redundancy and eliminate some of the um, guesswork out of the game. So I really don't want him to draw a card here since I'm so far ahead. I'm just going to go ahead and nullify this guy, which will deal two damage to him and we'll make a token. So we can hit him for six damage next turn. We might be able to just kill him next turn because I'm going to draw some cards too. So they're going to stop the timer. This is one thing I do not like about this game is that uh, it only gives you a certain amount of time to do things, which can be kind of annoying. And yeah, we definitely got this. So yeah, the power of the tempo deck. He, it, to his credit, he is not surrendering. We got the shock for some backup. Shock does two damage target creature or player. Yeah, getting in there. All right, we just won our first game. I'm sorry, it wasn't really that great. Uh, that guy uh, didn't really do anything all game. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this one, and I'll see you for the next one. Oh yeah, this is the lobby. It's uh, not very pretty. See you in a second.